Welcome to Everything Life Coaching. I'm John Kim. And I'm Noelle Cordeau. We are the founders of Lumia. And we're super passionate about all things coaching, and we want to share what we've learned from over a decade of coaching and training thousands of life coaches. Let's dive into the science and magic of coaching. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Everything Life Coaching podcast. As you know, one of the most important elements of any coach trading program, ours especially, is our instructors. And today we're going to speak with Kari Hornsby about unconscious bias, how it shows up in our world, how it shows up in us as humans, and what we can do about it. My friend, hello. Hey, hey, Noel, how are you? Thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Thank you for the invitation. It's always a pleasure to speak to you um, and uh, and, and just talk about all things coaching. It's it's our it's our passion. It's our love, and I, I love the conversation. It's a good space to be. So our listeners, unless they've they've gone through our program and had the opportunity to have you in class, should know who you are and all about you. So give us the primer. Um, where are you from? Who are you? What do you teach for Lumia? Sure. Thank you, Noel. Um, my name is Kari Hornsby. And um, I, uh, for Lumia, I teach uh, um, uh, content on unconscious bias and connecting across cultures. Uh, my background is um, I've uh, been working in international relations leadership roles for the past, for the past 15 years. My, my background uh, academically is in science. And in law, um, I worked with uh, internationally trained attorneys. That's what I've been doing for the past 15 years. So culture is very much uh, the lifeblood of, of what I do, not just as a profession, but in my personal life as well. Um, the, um, I am also a, uh, a trained and certified yoga asana instructor. And uh, I've been a, uh, an avid social dancer for 15 years. It's one thing I try to do whenever I visit a new country is is, is experience dance there and movement and, and, and connection. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's a pleasure. It's a passion. And I'm excited to talk more about it today. Thinking, I know that you've, you know, traveled super widely and you've worked in over 40 countries and your career has been really varied in terms of the experiences that you've had. What drew you to coaching? specifically. How did you ever hear about it? And, you know, what piqued your curiosity? Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Noel. And, you know, for me, um, and I think it's just uh, in a lot of ways, um, I always looked for, uh, for, for meaning in my life and in and, and, and my career. And I was raised with very much uh, a childhood that was rooted in um, an abundant philosophy towards life. Um, the reason I had the courage to to jet set and head out and live and visit other countries um, as a you know a, a kid from Detroit, Michigan, um, uh, the only child of a single parent um, uh, who has never uh, left the, the the country, is because I was you know brought up with this 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 if if I can visualize it, then I can accomplish it, and I think that's the greatest gift that my mother. Um, has given me um, is is just this mindset, and that kind of planted a seed, and has influenced how I relate to others and how I relate to the world. And I just have always have had this this um, this desire to see the people around me flourish. Like when when my I'm I'm, a, I'm just a great I'm a six foot two inch just cheerleader Noel. Like he's just <laughs> matching with pom poms going at it. Like I love I love I love when people around me are doing things that bring them light, that bring them joy. Um, and so when I realized that, and, and, and it influenced everything that I did, it influenced the way I lived my life. And when I realized that, oh, there's this field of coaching, that that's exactly what you do. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it doesn't have to just be how you do your work. It can be exactly what you do for work. Um, and um, and so that's what brought me to coaching, just this alignment of, 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 of life, of viewpoint. And um, and lived experience. I am so curious to get more inside your head. So we have 
you know, a background of cellular biology, law, cultural competency, uh, six foot two cheerleader, dancing, <laughs> yoga, right? And then we have this, you know, juxtaposition into, you know, dare I say, some pretty dark shit when we're looking at unconscious bias and um, how that leverages destruction in our world. And when you first came to develop the course for us at Lumia, you know, you told me point blank, this needs to happen because it saves lives. And I agreed with you. Um, so talk to me about bias. How did, how did you come to that point, given the spark of joy that you, that you embody? Yeah, no, thank you for that, Noel. It is a joyful journey. But the road is, 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 is tough. The road will push back at you. The road will um, have you question yourself, your thoughts, of others, right? And so it, it is really, um, you know, for me, um, on a very personal level, um, the first time that I, I remember the first time that I was called American. It was when I was living, uh, I was living in France. I was in my early 20s and someone, and, and not with ill intent, but really just, just making a, a statement said, well, you're an American. You would, you know, you would say, you know, X, Y, or Z, right? It was a, a friend of mine. And, and I was really taken aback by that statement, um, being called an American. And when I, when I kind of had a moment to myself to unpack that, I realized that that was the first time in my life that I'd unequivocally been called an American, uncouched by African American, Black American. You know, I never viewed myself as an American. And when someone called me that, I didn't know how to take it. Um, and that just kind of had this, that, that ended up having this spiral into like, you know, who am I? What am I? What is my culture? What is my home? How do I identify in it? Um, which is um, a beautiful process, uh, you know, beautiful process now. But at the time, that's, those are very difficult um, um, questions to ask. And I think we've all been there in different ways and contexts. Um, and for me, um, it begged me reevaluating my own culture and my relationship to it. And, and, and so, um, you know, we all have those moments where in order to go deep, we need a certain amount of friction, right? We can't just be on cloud nine, loving it, poolside, whatever it may be, whatever your image of, of the high life is. Um, we can't sit in that place and ask, and oftentimes be presented with the circumstances that will have us question the lens through which we view life and through which we live, which is very necessary if we're going to do that work. How we go through that process, I think, is where we do the mindset work, right? Um, and so where the coaching comes into play. But we need that opportunity to, uh, uh, to kind of seek that, uh, that awareness and that insight. Oh, yeah. And thank you so much. That was such a poignant description. And, you know, what struck me is that we all travel through life and through time and we don't often pause to inquire how folks outside of the schemas and paradigms that we see um, perceive us in terms of, of where we're from and what that might mean. Um, you know, you're, the, the study of this work that you've undertaken has been vast. And a lot of folks are interested in coming into the space of cultural competency right now, interested in coming into um, the work of um, unconscious bias, specifically with the lens towards anti-racism, which is so needed. Um, and I wouldn't know where to begin if I were to direct someone to you know, say, this is your starting point. Um, can you tell us a little bit about some of the predominant touchstones that folks need to take into account when they're, you know, beginning to study? Sure. Yeah. And, and it is, I mean, to, 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 to instruct um, someone on a, a starting point 
is um, is not easy because oftentimes the starting point is something that's you know very unique and personal to us, right? Because the present day associations that we use to distinguish between ourselves, right, between what's familiar and what's unfamiliar, between what's you know what's what's family and what's and in, 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 in who are strangers, um, those those values, those teachings are largely given to us by those who are closest to us, by our friends, our families, our religious and faith communities, right? And yes, to an extent, larger society. Um, and if we're talking about these things from a U.S. context, these in-group and out-group associations have almost, to a, to a, to an instance, have taken on anti-Indigenous, anti-Black, uh, and misogynistic over, over and undertones, right? And it's left the, the the perspectives and lives of women and the BIPOC community and um, non-binary people consistently undervalued. And so when we're when we're doing the work and we're kind of choosing that starting point, I would almost say what we have to root ourselves in is this combination. Of, and 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 when I do my work, when I do when I do per, when I when I'm personally coaching, I always refer, refer to the work as going from the inside out, right? It's kind of ebb and flow, mm. it's weaving, right? Because we we have to if, if we if we don't have an internal, um, if we haven't reset our internal landscape, we can't hope to do real and lasting work, right? Um, unless we're really going inside. However. What we hope is the result of this internal work, right, is how is, is manifestation in our relationship, in our communities, um, in our associations, in our lives, right? So we're, we're this, it, it, and that's what makes the work so dynamic. It's this interplay between the internal work and the and the ex and, and, and the work that will manifest itself in our relationships. And so, but we have to start in grounding ourselves in looking in our own backyards. Yeah. So what I'm hearing from you is that the journey on the road towards cultural competency and understanding our own relationship with bias really works from the inside out, the micro all the way out to the macro, taking us on the journey of understanding ourselves and then taking that work out into the world to help others not only understand themselves, but change the way that our institutions mm-hmm. treat, mm-hmm. treat us as individuals and as mm-hmm. a collective. Yeah, that, that's, that's so, that's, yes, exactly, Noel. And one thing, one, one kind of example or an- anecdote I'll give, as I mentioned, I um, am a trained um, asana instructor. Um, um, I don't use the term yoga instructor because there are eight limbs of yoga. It's, you know, self we, we've definitely, co- you know, um, col- tried to colonize yoga here in the West in terms of it's not Lululemon and um, and, and Instagram flexibility shots, right? Um, but in terms of yoga, pra- yoga practice, asana practice, I'll oftentimes hear um, other practitioners, um, you know, talk about you know this need to you know oh my gosh without my without my hour on the mat, you know I just I just feel so ungrounded and, and that's my peace, that's my um, that's my space um, to, to to plug in and, and and to kind of feel rooted in my truth. And I'll and I'll sometimes push back and say, you know, the reason we call it asana practice is because you're here to practice and to cultivate. In in in, in we'll use we we'll use the term peace, so that ultimately you can take it into other areas of your life. Um, if 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 this hour a day is the only, is 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 you know is, is is the only place where you're finding this, um, I mean it's very easy for us to take a vacation, um, go on a silent retreat, um, go on the long hike. We all have these ways of kind of grounding ourselves, and we need that self care, self soothing are essential. And and I think it's incumbent upon us, and what the work requires is that we also find ways of taking that into our lives. Can we find, you know, can, can we find that groundedness when, you know, 
un- Uncle Billy Bob at the Thanksgiving Day table starts talking nonsense again about X, Y, or Z, right? Now, now th- th- that's your that's your that's your practice right there, right? In those moments when you're being challenged, in those moments where um, it's not you know you sitting by a stream or you playing this wonderful music, this soothing, and so it's incumbent upon us. We can't just lie with the internal work because sometimes that can make us feel so comfortable. It can feel so good when we're doing that internal work and we're in our sweet spot. Ultimately, we have to live it. We have to live it. And that's where the challenge is. Yeah, you you took the words right out of my my mouth. I was going to, what was really coming up for me when I was listening to you is that um, we have to live in our lives. And it is, it isn't effective to pretend that um, th- that it, we can tap into these wellsprings when it's mm-hmm. convenient for us, because the world that we live in right now um, is calling for something different. Quite frankly, you know, year three of a pandemic, um, unresolved civil mm-hmm. rights issues, um, Black lives matter. They still matter. They've always mattered, but the the conversation, the focus has has shifted. Um, I have a song that I sing <laughs> when I think about you know problems in the world, and the song is um, I won't do the, the actual singing now, but the lyrics no, are Noel. Um, you know, know the song, of- <laughs> I think I think I mean, can we get, can we just get a couple <laughs> bars? I mean, can we get a little bars? Sure, okay. sure. Sure. It's only because we're friends. White supre- here, here it goes. White supremacist, patriarchal, capitalistic society. Uh, you know, and so, you know, as we trudge through the depths, which of those things is it? You know, which one of those things is, is, is hunting us today? And something that I say all the time to everyone, no matter what the situation is, is hate the system, mm-hmm. not yeah. the human. Hate the system, not the hate all the systems, not the humans, because the humans don't know what they don't know. They can't see what they can't see, and they can't see what we see. So, in in order to form any hope for our future, I feel that um, centering in humanism is important, and figuring out ways to build bridges to understanding is the only path forward so that we can understand each other and hopefully find, you know, common ground in humanity so that we can take on the challenges of our time. But, you know, there's a pandemic that's trying to kill us right now. Maybe we can come together yeah, there. Yeah, yeah no. Um, <laughs> it, it, it reminds me of um, the old um, adage. Um, I can't remember if it was Socrates or perhaps it was Ice T who first said, "Don't hate the player, hate the game." Right? <laughs> um, but um, but yeah, it, it, it's exactly right. No, and, and I and I think that, but that, unfortunately, that has is 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 contagious in our culture right now. We 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 can't talk to each other. It's scary to talk to each other. It's scary, um, and you know. The things that are scary about it have been, um, I, I have been, they're man made, right? Uh, this, it didn't feel this scary 10 years ago to talk to each other. Um, it felt that discourse felt a little bit more, more civilized 10 years ago. And maybe it's just because I was younger, stupider, and more naive. I don't know. But um, there seems to have been a, a serious, disintegration of civic society. Um, I saw a quote yesterday on cancel culture. Mm-hmm. It's on Instagram. James is smiling. It's, is, is someone that I follow, an actor. And he said, I am uninterested in cancellation, which is nothing more than the whitewashed commodification of calls for accountability and the bastardization of restorative justice practices. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts? That's deep. And there's been such a debate over, over cancellation and what that means. And um, I think I would agree that um, 
cancellation cannot be our end goal. It cannot be the end game. Um, it's it's kind of what I, you know, you you, you are a um, you're you're a neuroscience nerd, right? And um, and oh yeah, you know, we oftentimes talk about these these dopamine hits we get from you know, these small little rushes, whether it be, you know, the ping on our phone, we get a new text or, um, you know, whatever, whatever it might be. And I, I kind of equate like cancel culture to that, um, um, that rush that people get when they sometimes, when they tell somebody off, right. Um, you know, uh, it, you know, when you, when you maybe, you know, whether it's you, you kind of, you know, um, um, whatever it may be, you write that, you write that comment, um, in a, in a post where you just, you know, um, um, you know, really just shut someone down. And, and, and yeah, in that moment, um, I think depending upon where you are in your stage of development in that moment, that can feel good. But what have effectively you done at, in that moment? Have you, um, have you engaged? Have you, um, given someone the opportunity to learn or to evolve? And, and ultimately in the long run, have you actually advanced the very cause that you stand for, or have you just created new divisions? Um, there, there's a, if I, I want to, um, if I can, can I, can I, may I share a quote? So um, this is from the, the journalist and author. Uh, her name is Maria Hinojosa, and she's an author, and she, she wrote, um, um, I Once Was You, A Memoir of Love and Hate in a Torn America. And she, and she has this quote mm-hmm. that I absolutely love, because it, it talks about this balance of approach as we, um, we go through the process of honoring who we are culturally, discovering who we are culturally, whoever you know, that we may be in our various and a sundry of intersectional identities, but also the connected nature of how we must undergo that pursuit. And she says, we have to be very careful around a sense of nationalism as our only purpose. Because the notion of hyper identity as a community can lead us to exclusion. It is vital that we have a sense of identity because we're being erased, silenced, and targeted. We cultivate our own intersectional and cultural identities to center and empower ourselves while establishing our roots in history. At the same time, we must do so while recognizing the end goal of our effort is to connect and to create solidarity. Well, I, I just think that that's the key. You know, no other, I mean, that's the sweet spot. You know, we, we, you know, we have to honor who we are. We have to speak our truth, speak our voices, speak the history of our ancestors. And, and, and also, um, we must do so in a way and realize that our ultimate goal is to connect, is to create solidarity. If we're just creating more dissension, it hurts us all. Yes. Yes. And I, I, I couldn't agree more. You know, the, the point about solidarity was really powerful. And what struck me was really kind of, you know, bringing this all the way back around mm-hmm. to coaching and to the, the wellspring of, of joy that we can offer folks. And you know, we've taken a, a lot of deep dives and U turns in our conversation today, but ultimately, the reason that this conversation is important and the reason that it relates to coaches is that, as a coach, it is um, one of the standards of the International Coaching Federation for for any coach who works with human beings to get a handle on this stuff, to get a handle on the way that we might be shutting down. Others, because we don't understand, um, or we don't honor, or we can't see um, the richness that exists mm-hmm. in difference. Um, and it is imperative that as coaches, we get a handle on the way that unconscious bias functions in our lives so that we can hold space in an ethical way, so that we can hold space in an unbiased way, and so that we can become very mm-hmm. curious about the world around us and ask questions of our clients that empower them to be who they are in solidarity with our clients as just a fellow mm-hmm. human. Yes. It, and and, and I, I couldn't agree more. And 
And, and, and just a little, a, a little you know, side note to that, one term that I hear in coaching um, and, that, and that some of the, um, are in, in the Lumia cohorts I work with, some people have, have asked this question of, well, as a coach, don't I, don't I typically have a niche, a niche? Don't I niche down where I'm kind of talking to certain types of people? So why might I need to kind of have these skills to kind of talk to everyone? And, and, and to your point about shutting down or shutting people out, niching down doesn't mean shutting people out. Yes, you may work with, you know, um, you know, uh, um, um, women in fitness. Yes, you may work with men who have gone through divorce. Yes, you may be going, you, you have a certain niche, but because, but, but you, because you have a certain niche does not mean you're unable <laughs> to connect uh, in a real and whole way to, to people who fall outside of that niche. Because oh yeah, yeah we have so many identities that oftentimes, as you all know that you've experienced when you're coaching, Noel, is that people come to you with one, with one um, um, kind of issue they want to work and work with you on, but oftentimes in a sundry of other things come up too. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I think that's really important information around niche work. So when you were talking about, you know, women who are interested in fitness or men who um, have gone through a divorce and are seeking healing, um, those are experiences, not identities. And, you know, the, the, the big rounding difference is, you know, what if the woman who is interested in fitness mm-hmm. is a trans woman? Are you prepared? to drop all of your assumptions at the door about who this person is and talk to them about (laughs) fucking fitness and nothing else. Right. Like that's where we're at with this work. It's, it's, it's very complex and yet also very straightforward at the same time you drop your blinders at the door and remain open to the person in front of you. Truth. Truth. Taking us down this path. Um, thank you for teaching for Lumia. Thank you for developing, um, the class on unconscious bias. This was a really awesome and petty conversation. Um, I have a one, two punch to close out with. Um, if you had a magic Mm -hmm. wand and you could, you know, wave it, wave it around and let everyone know just one thing that they could experience um, from the perspective of joy and freedom in this work, what would it be? And where can we find you so that you can help more people do this? Sure. Work? No, thank, thank you for that, Noel. And I'm just breathing into that question a little bit because it's, it's, it's an important one. Um, you know, in my work, I, I I work with you know professionals to help them, but you know transition into careers to have meaning. And we see right now, um, you know, th- this world that we live in kind of has relied upon momentum it, 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 to keep us from asking those kind of core questions and creating that friction in we lo- in, in our lives. Um, the, the, the internal, not just external circumstances, but some of those the the the, the, the friction and doing the work that comes along with it, it takes space, right? And at the rate at which we've lived, especially in this Western uh, world, especially in the United States, hasn't allowed us the space to really um, sit with um, those moments that provide us opportunity to reflect. And you've spoken about this in past podcasts, Noel, and I think one thing that this last three years has provided for us is it is an interruption. It's interrupted this hamster wheel that we've been on is to where people look at their lives and they say, you know what, I, I want something different. Um, I want something more meaningful. Um, you know, they finally had the chance to kind of truly sit with um, and, 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 and present with the opportunity to truly sit with some of these questions. And, you know, what I, and, and, and that's kind of the, 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 the professionals that I work in, work with who, had this opportunity and they're like, okay, well, what do I do next? Right. And we kind of, um, we work together to further their understanding of their internal landscape and using that as a foundation to create, um, meaning and authentic relationships. And when I say relationships, I don't mean in the romantic sense, 
I mean, relationships are connecting to anything that's external to us, our job, our community, our friendship, our family, the environment, right? And if there's one thing that I could uh, kind of wave my magic wand and give would be the space to be curious. I think Mm. curiosity is something that's so important in our ability to connect to each other. And unfortunately, curiosity has this context, and at least in, in, in U.S. English, of being like, it's, it's, it's something we describe as, you know, to perhaps, it's just juvenile, right? Um, children are curious, right? When we talk about a curious adult, it's not necessarily seen as something that's complementary. It's almost kind of seen as um, infantilization a little bit, like, like you know, we're, 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 we're making little of, of a person. But to approach our conversations, to approach new information, giving it the space to really just say, huh, I wonder. Um, and not only is it, um, it, it, it creates this mindset where when you speak to someone and that person is genuinely curious about what you have to say, don't you feel it? Yes. Exactly. Like it feels differently. Even if you two may feel, you know, that you're coming from two different perspectives or you come from, you know, um, um, what, what we've been set up to believe in, 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 pop, in popular discourse are oppositional perspectives. If someone approaches you with genuine curiosity, you just sink into the conversation more. you sink into yourself, you sink into the dynamic um, and you fill that space with a positive energy that it's not about necessarily what we discuss, it's how. And that curiosity gives us a way how it gives us a way to discuss these things in a way that's regenerative and that can that that, that word gives me hell. Um can, can, can regenerate, right? Positive uh, impact and and real sincere connection. Awesome. Awesome. And thank you for um you know doing this work out in the world. So I know uh, your preference is LinkedIn for connecting with the humans. <laughs> um, g- elaborate. Tell me yeah, more. Yeah, um, any, any, any of the humans who want to connect, please feel free. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. My name again is Kari Hornsby, um, K-H-A-R-Y um, Hornsby. You can find me there. Um, I, I have a few things coming up that I'm working on that are going to be brand new, but you can have act, you can find access to those um, through LinkedIn. So I look forward to connecting. Um, Noel, I just thank you. I thank Rithu for organizing us and keeping us on the same page. And, and I'm just really grateful for, uh, uh, for what, what you do and what Lumia does to change the world, because I am so passionate about that. And I truly believe in my heart of hearts that what we're doing is changing lives, it changes how we relate to each other, our families, our communities. And that by definition changes the world. I hope so. I hope so. One heart, one mind, and one conversation at a time. There we go. Thank you for your time today. It's been a pleasure and we will see you in our classroom. Thanks so much, Noel. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for listening to Everything Life Coaching. If you're feeling the draw to become a coach, head to lumiacoaching.com slash everything. Explore a new career that brings fulfillment, gives you a true sense of purpose, and a bold community to do it with. Lumia is ready to equip you with the tools, training, and community you will need to reach your goals. If you're ready to build a unique coaching business on your own terms while making an impact on the world at large, Lumia is the next bold step in your coaching journey. That's lumiacoaching.com slash everything. And hey, if you're waiting for a sign, this is it.